Hey yo, welcome back for another Specic adventure. Over the weekend, Tommy and I attended the Alameda County Fair. It was our third time there, so we're basically veterans at this point. Therefore, it is with this self-proclaimed veteran status that we're here to tell you that some of y'all are sleeping on this event, especially, and I mean especially, the Asian community. Is it because of our millennial demographic or something? I feel like all we care about these days are food fairs, especially that 6 to 6 night market thing. It ain't even all that good and it's pricey as hell. I said what I said. Why would I pay an entrance fee so that I can stand in line and pay again for food? The only food establishment I would pay an entrance fee for is an all-you-can-eat buffet. Make it make sense. Entrance fee for the fair is $18 per person and parking is $15 per car. You can purchase the ticket in person or online. If you're going on a predictably busy day, like a holiday weekend, I would suggest pre-purchasing online to save some time. Once inside, you get access to food, carnival, and entertainment. Let's go over each of these things. Expect to pay typical fairground prices for typical fairground food. Prices range from around $15 to $20. Interestingly enough, if you're in the carnival area, you can find cheaper eats like nachos for six bucks. Prices are probably cheaper there because they cater to kids, but also expect your six dollar nachos to taste like three dollar nachos. Tommy and I got a decently tasty Philly cheesesteak for 15 bucks, an 18 dollar hot dog that was really salty. We also got an apple funnel cake for 15 bucks, and this one was not bad. It was loaded with lots of apple and whipped cream and served hot. I remember funnel cakes with less toppings selling for like 20 something dollars at Disney World, so I would say this was decently priced. We also need to talk about water because you know I can't live without my water. So bring your own water bottle and head inside one of the buildings towards the center of the fairgrounds. They have water stations inside. You're very welcome. A fair is not complete without the carnival. Your entrance ticket does not cover any carnival rides or games. You'll need to purchase separate tickets for carnival activities. But Tiffany, I want to go on the Ferris wheel. I mean, sure, yeah, go ahead, you can. But just know that you're going to be like two heads taller than everyone else in line. Most of the people waiting in line for rides and games were middle schoolers or at most high schoolers. But don't let me stop you. If you want to show up that kid trying to win his data stuffed animal in a shooting game, be my guest. Outside the carnival, you'll find vendors selling various stuff. There was also a woman playing the piano, Roomba style. Tommy and I were trying to figure out how she was controlling where she was going, but we couldn't quite figure that out. Maybe somebody here enlighten us. In the middle of the fairgrounds are four buildings. You'll see them labeled on the outside with signs mentioning what you would be able to see once inside the building. I recommend taking some time to check those out. In particular, I found the Little Critters building and the Collectibles and Keepsake buildings particularly interesting. Inside the Little Critters building, there are lots of small animals for sale. Yes, you can buy these animals. There are birds and rabbits and guinea pigs. There was even also a peafowl, which is like the girl version of a peacock. They had these silky chicks, which if I was in a position, I would totally buy it. 
but obviously that doesn't make any practical sense. There was also a petting station and let me tell you, this rabbit was the softest thing ever. It's like touching a really soft and dense makeup brush. Collectible and Keepsake is exactly that, just a display of local residents' collections. Residents would submit their collection to see who would be ranked the best. I don't know what the criteria is, but I did overhear a girl next to me mentioning she was actually one of the judges for the collections. And she said that one of the criteria that she was judging upon was how creatively the collections could be displayed. You'll see that some of these collections include items from many, many years ago, even a century ago. One of the most unique collections I saw was this sugar packet collection. Apparently, the dude started collecting sugar packets since he was 10, so this is a 20-year-old collection. Another cool building to check out outside of these four buildings is called Inside Our Schools. Similar to collections from earlier, students from local schools would submit their artwork to be judged and then displayed in this building for fairgoers to admire. Kind of cool. There are some seriously talented youths among us. And then there's this. Ain't no way. Yo. I think, I think she has too many teeth. <laughs> Make sure to take the time to roam around the fairgrounds in its entirety. There's so many different exhibits to check out that I won't mention them all here, but here's a few top contenders. The Railroad and Train Museum. The outside display of old running gasoline engines. I'm over 100 years old. old tractor showroom and the preserved slash baked goods building. I don't have a picture of the building since I didn't need to go in there this time around and I'll tell you why this building is important. I'm mentioning this one not because there's anything impressive in there but because of the fact that there's a bathroom inside this building that does not see any frequent activity and not many people actually know about it. So if you're coming on a busy day and the bathroom lines outside are fucking ridiculous, then go ahead and check this bathroom out. Now, let's move on to the last and very best thing about the Alameda County Fair. The reason why it's worth the $18 entrance fee, in my opinion, live entertainment we're talking about horse racing motocross pig racing medieval jousting kids pedal pushing contests and a drone show to wrap up the night and that's not even all of it they also had magic shows and outdoor concerts but there were so many things to see that day that we didn't actually get a chance to check out the other ones out there for the full list of activities and schedules go ahead and check out the Alameda Fair website, which I will link below. So back in 2018, the very first year Tommy and I actually attended this thing, they had monster trucks, but we didn't see it on the roster ever since. It was my very first time seeing monster trucks in action, and it was such a surprise to see these shows in the Bay Area. They really need to bring it back because it was legit or like bring on demolition derby or something because that would be really sick. 
The only auto-related show they had this year was Motoplex. It's still really cool. Check them out. They had this event called Pedal Pushers, but it turned out that it was just these kids that were between the ages of 4 through 11 biking this tiny little tractor with weights in the back to see how much and how far they could push it. It was kind of hilarious to see the announcer dude hyping these kids up no matter how far they actually pushed the damn thing. Apparently, the standing record this year is an 11-year-old girl pulling 400 pounds. That's pretty damn impressive. I don't think my weensy little calves could push that much. So after the motocross event, we saw people gathering by the animal stables and it turned out there was a sheep shearing demonstration, which I've never seen. This sheep was not having it. He was thrashing around the entire time. He's like, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> They also had pig racing, which might be new this year. They had four to five baby pigs race around a circular track, and each section of the audience was assigned to support one of the pigs. Our section was supporting Sourdough Jack, and he was the uncontested winner. Go, Sourdough Jack! You can't legally bet on pig racing here, but you could for horse racing. They have a whole ass horse racing track here and the event runs from around 1pm to 5pm. You can wager bets on which horse you think will win. It's a pretty popular event at the fairgrounds and you'll find a lot of older people drinking and betting here. The racetrack is used for other events after the horse racing ends. There was a medieval jousting show. Like legit, they would have two dudes rush at each other on horses with weapons and armory would fly off from impact. I honestly love weird stuff like this. I mean, it's not really weird, but I wouldn't call jousting a normal common day thing to see. So it's super cool I could enjoy this without needing to specifically attend something like a medieval fair, you know, just to go see it. We wrapped up the night with a drone show. Drones are all the rage these days and it's way less harmful on the environment than blowing up fireworks every night for a full month, so I wholeheartedly approve. <laughs> the Alameda County Fair is a great way to spend a summer weekend with family and friends. It has entertainment for all ages and there's so many unfamiliar things to see that it's well worth the $18 entrance fee. Check the description for links on their hours and schedules, as well as other information. As of this video, the fair will still be open for another week or so. We hope you get the chance to check it out and let us know if you had fun there. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for another Spikic Adventure. Bye!